Hello friends. Welcome back. After almost a year, I'm going to record my new video today. And today I'm going to speak something new, new technology, interesting technology, Kubernetes. And well, last month I joined a new company which is a Kubernetes data platform, and that is uh, pure storage. And I'm going to work on Portox, which is a, now, in fact, many companies are adopting the de facto data platform on Kubernetes. So I'm going to talk about Portox on Kubernetes. So with that, let's start. And yes, if you are not subscribed to my channel, please do it. And I'll appreciate that. Thank you. This is Portox and it is a Kubernetes data platform. So I'm going to speak a little about uh, Portox and uh, what it is, what its use cases where it is used and how to deploy it and what are the advantages of using Podox. So with that, uh, I'll present my one slide only where I'll speak briefly about Podox. So, well, this is me. Um, I just, as I said, I just joined uh, two months back as a cloud architect uh, for Podox. And well, I'll not go into some marketing slides here, uh, but I'll give some brief history of containers and why Fortox is important and what are the use cases. To understand the use cases of Portox or to understand what Portox solves or what it does, little history is required here. So. Uh, we all know containers and why the containers are useful. So, <clears throat> with the uh, advancement of technology, advancement of container orchestration platform like Kubernetes, people started deploying Kubernetes and containers extensively. Uh, in fact, the de facto standard today of deploying containers uh, is Kubernetes, through Kubernetes. So um, you see Kubernetes is almost everywhere. So uh, whether you call it in uh, public cloud, private cloud, hybrid cloud, and in fact, in a hybrid cloud and multi-cloud scenarios, Kubernetes is getting de facto deployment platform because of its flexibility of handling containers across the platforms. So, but uh, with uh, Kubernetes is getting um, more um, complex. Obviously, it has to be complex because uh, customers and uh, uh, enterprises, they are uh, deploying thousands of containers. Uh, I'm not uh, just talking thousands, minus really. Um, I, I know customers, uh, they, they are deploying 100,000 containers in one the, for their requirements of the applications. So um, with that kind of deployments, definitely the underlying Kubernetes environment is going to be complex. So today I'm going to briefly discuss about the uh, challenges what uh, the enterprises are facing, right? Uh, deploying such huge number of containers. Uh, and this is a little uh, old though, um, uh, it is surveyed by uh, the survey was done by CNCF and it is in 2020. So uh, they ask uh, one question only what are your challenges in using deploying, uh, using or deploying containers? So they gave various options, but if you see here, um, if you just um, ignore the first and second, the complexity and cultural challenge, uh, they, these are all obviously uh, not technology in nature, but obviously I said uh, it is getting more and more complex. But if you see here, the next two are security and storage. 
So security is getting definitely complex and challenging in ma with managing number of containers. Uh, when uh, we suppose if, we, if you have an environment where there are 100,000 containers are there, so it will be a challenge definitely securing those, securing your applications in containers, right? So, and the next one is about storage. If you know Kubernetes, you know that Kubernetes is famous among developers just to deploy microservices applications who are all um, stateless in nature, stateless. So that means uh, containers can start from one machine, they can be deployed and they can be uh, put to die and they can be restarted somewhere else. And that's obviously the, the mobile nature, the mobility of uh, uh, of containers, inherent property of containers, right? So that is uh, the portability. That means obviously uh, it can be placed anywhere without much changes to underlying infrastructure. And that makes it pretty much um, very effective in deploying a um, multi-cloud or hybrid cloud environment. So uh, with that kind of nature, uh, the storage, if we have some storage attached to those stateless applications, then obviously data has a gravity always. That means it is heavy. So migrating those data along with the applications is going to be one of the challenges which Kubernetes does not solve inherently. It does not solve itself. Obviously it does very well in orchestrating stateless applications as containers, but when it comes to storage, or maybe if I may say so, stateful applications, deploying a stateful application in containers on Kubernetes orchestration platform is always has been a challenge. Think that if we are running a database inside Kubernetes, as a container or pod, then if that pod dies and underlying storage is attached to it, and that means the storage is attached to one node, Kubernetes node. So that means if we have to restart the same pod in another node, that means we have to attach the same volume storage volume to another node. Of course, it is uh, uh, containers uh, or pods are uh, connected to volumes uh, using uh, the storage volumes in Kubernetes, but the, it is not so seamless. And that has been a challenge. And it's continued to be a challenge unless we have some orchestration platform for the storage itself. So there where Portox comes into rescue. That means Kubernetes does its job by orchestrating the stateless applications and Portox does orchestrating the underlying storage for those stateful, stateless applications. So we have, if we have a um, multi-tier application, you have uh, a state pool, stateless application, then we have the uh, databases like uh, Postgres, which is mostly used nowadays with uh, microservices. Then if we are going to host those databases, Postgres, as a part, then that can be well orchestrated by Portox. So with Kubernetes and Portox can give you a true multi-tier application in a hybrid and multi-cloud scenario, true mobility or true portability can be achieved. So with that, um, I have written those, I think I have not yet touched up on what I wrote here. Obviously it is, I almost said it, everything, whatever I just said. 
In fact, I, I, I uh, already said uh, the first one. The second one is this when, uh, you know that um, Kubernetes is famous among developers because uh, they, they, they can easily develop and deploy the applications in Kubernetes using kubectl command. And that's the easy of uh, deploying an applications, but whereas, and because developers don't worry about the infrastructure. So, but with uh, DevOps pipeline, when data comes into play, it's not that easy to play around stories or infrastructure directly using DevOps pipeline. So that has been little challenges for developers. And we definitely solved these both problems using Portox on Kubernetes. Well, um, I will stop here for, um, uh, before really going ahead, I'll not uh, speak with um, my slides, but I'll stop here uh, with uh, a demo, quick quick demo. Today I'm going to show how we are deploying a stateful applications into Kubernetes using Podox. So what I'm going to do is here, uh, I'm going to uh, deploy first a Kubernetes environment. Uh, I'll use AWS as the cloud environment to deploy this cluster. So uh, three things I'll do here. I'll create the Kubernetes cluster on AWS. Well, uh, EKS takes time, so I'll not, um, um, uh, because this is a small demo, I'll not use EKS, but I'll use my own um, uh, tool to create a three node cluster four node cluster, rather one master and three node, uh, or three worker nodes. So we'll create two separate clusters, two separate um, Kubernetes cluster, and we'll install Portox on that, on those two clusters. So they'll be in sync. They will create a storage cluster themselves. And what we're going to show is today, I'm going to so how the DR can happen in those cluster. That means if one goes down, one cluster, one Kubernetes cluster goes down, how we can bring that application quickly on the other cluster by means of the data transfer or uh, the, that means the actual data or actual data uh, actual database is migrated to the other cluster that means actually the we, we are migrating the database in no time so that's how that's what i'm going to demo today in my presentation or uh, demo so uh, let's go ahead and see uh, how it is done see you next see you in my next video